Welcome back to the Saw Retrospective, everybody. I'm Chad. I am here with Santino. What's up, everybody? And Dylan. Hey, good to be back. All right, and we are coming near the end of the Saw franchise and near the end of, uh, we'll, we'll call it the first run before the two, uh, before the two reboots. So let's dive right into what was meant to be the final chapter, Saw 3D. You know, Dylan, what was your first thoughts on this one when you saw it? Was this a good ending or no? Uh, I'd say at best it's so bad it's good. Uh, and at worst, it's just bad. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'd say overall the movie, uh, you know, it's completely stupid and not in a way that's like the fun kind of stupid like in the previous movies. It, it just kind of feels like they, like, were they even trying with this one? <laughs> <laughs> no it doesn't it doesn't feel like they were trying but i'll give it this that bitch at the beginning got what she deserved <laughs> uh, man, that, that trap man so stupid like since when did saw like display his, his yeah yeah, yeah, yeah true okay that was stupid that was character stupid. it and so impractical too like the way the way like no one called for police or or the way that no one tried breaking through except for that, that was one so with, yeah that, that lady who used the like front of her briefcase. stopped end of a briefcase yeah i you know when i look at that trap i don't see it as a john kramer move it feels like a a marketing gimmick you know it feels like something you put in the trailers or it feels like it feels like one of those like guerrilla style marketing things they do like mm -hmm. you know that like what's that gaten matarazzo show where he scares people in job interviews <laughs> it feels like that do you want to know my biggest question about the intro trap? What's what? that? Who did it? <sighs> Wasn't it? Wait, when, was it when would Hoffman have done it, and why would Hoffman have done it? It was, it, it was, okay. it, it was that guy, right? Uh, um, <laughs> that guy. Uh, Lawrence Gordon. Gordon. Why would was Gordon it? have done it? Whose voice was it on the on the tape? Was it John Kramer? It was yeah. Billy's voice. Okay. Yeah, it's bizarre. Like, was he just following some random, like... I don't know. That's, that's, you know what? That's the biggest problem I have with this whole movie. Who did any of these traps? Hoffman's hand was broken at the end of Saw 6. I mean, this picks up right after, but it's like, have, how did he been. manage to capture... How, okay, how did he manage to capture all the racists and put them in their trap? And all and, of... Yeah, uh, the main asshole and all of his friends. How did he manage to do all of that? Well, okay, when this takes place right after the six immediately movie. after. Okay. Well, could it have been that the traps were already set up to happen immediately after the sixth movie as well? But when would he have set those up? Uh before the events of the fourth i don't know but he was but that's what i'm saying he was extremely busy during five and six literally yeah, covering his I tracks think. he wouldn't have had time to set up any more traps. maybe maybe john in his final days just wanted to go out with a bang and so he just made like all five <laughs> of these these different games see the main know. guy it's uh, weird, like, uh, the main guy bobby dagan his whole trap okay here's my biggest issue with this movie bobby dagan's trap pretending to be a jigsaw survivor that to me could have worked if this had been made like 10 years after jigsaw himself had died i think why would you pretend you survived a trap when jigsaw was there. still alive yeah right? that was such a that is these that's literally tempting that's like saying put me in a trap yeah uh -huh. it's like saying like this you're you're asking to be killed. Like, and, You're and messing with an individual who bases traps around people who don't value their lives. So you're going to lie <laughs> and say he put you in when he, when he really didn't? Yeah, that, 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 that was such a <laughs> shit. That shows thing. how stupid yeah. he actually is. And, he and this whole trap goes against Jigsaw's philosophy of I don't kill people. Yeah, that's why you just murdered the guy's wife right in front of him. Yeah. Even though did she did know? nothing yeah. wrong. She didn't even know he was a hack. 
Yeah, he murdered, like Jigsaw literally, well, we'll say Jigsaw R. Hoffman, whoever it was, they murdered an innocent woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, wait, 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 okay, so I, 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 I've been wanting to be, I think this is like the worst Saw movie in my opinion. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, like, um, number one, as bad as, as shitty as um, that guy was and lying and not actually being tested and all that, that wife didn't deserve that, you know, to die. Seriously. No yeah, way. I guess it kind of crossed the line. And in, in, and in such a horrible way, like, you, we see your skin melting off, like, it's like fucking, <laughs> she's a fucking uh, melted cheese fondue. I was like, yeah. dude, I was like, why are we, why, like, okay, Jigsaw is a murderer, but even this is far for him. Like, but what did she do to deserve that? Yeah, yeah, she didn't do anything. She yeah. married a guy who lied to her. Like, it's not her fault. Yeah, exactly. And also another thing, um, and this, this is kind of personal, and you know, um, I'm not sure how you feel about this, but like, I'm a big fan of Linkin Park and his, their early songs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chester Bennington. I, yeah, I did. I did not like seeing Chester Bennington like go out like that. I, was like, I, I liked it. I mean, he. I thought I mean, it was hilarious. Yeah, I like, thought yeah, he was I mean, great. Like, it's really a small well. thing, but like you know, given what, was, what happened, I was like, oh, that sucks. But like, I mean, well, like, just personal for me. I was like, oh, oh, oh. I, you know, as long as he had fun, I think it's okay. And he seemed yeah, very yeah. enthusiastic in the interview, so good for him. Yeah, I remember he didn't he like ask to be in this or something. Oh, he did. Okay. I, I think I think, I think I could be him. Wrong. I think they asked him, and he was like a big fan of okay. Saw anyways, so he he agreed to it. Okay. I wasn't sure. I must have gotten it mixed up. But I could have seen him asking. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, all right. So the biggest thing with this movie is that I have the biggest issue with is none of it really makes any sense. How in the world did he did Hoffman have time to set up any of this? There's no way he could have had this contingency plan set up. Not a chance of, in hell. No, I no. Uh-huh. But the thing is, like, maybe it was Logan. No, 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 like, no. No, no, we're not going there yet. We're gonna go there. I guess you know that that does kind of, I guess that does kind of validate it. Like, like, honestly, like, 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 tell me, does that not make sense? Like, if we're doing that, if we're doing uh, that. No, because yeah. Logan wasn't an accomplice. He was more of an apprentice. I mean, uh, you know, when... Gordon incapacitates Hoffman Bion. He's accompanied by these two masked pigmen, who that I know was are the two dudes from. The I, I know they're supposed to be them, but they never confirmed, did they? Well, they, yeah, they, they confirmed it one... in interviews, which I fucking hate because it's like, all right, just because you confirm it in an interview doesn't make it canon because you didn't confirm it in the film, so it doesn't count. Yeah, in the context yeah, of the yeah, film, they give like, I was like they give okay. when they're in the rehab group, they give like one like kind of shady stare to each other, and like, and that's it. <laughs> It's because, for the I, I told you guys this, for those who don't know, there was supposed to be two movies. And when Saw 6 didn't make as much money as it was supposed to, they were like, fine, let's just end this now before we keep losing money, even though they still made plenty of cash. Right. I, I think like Saw 6's budget was 11 and it made like 68 million. It still That's made- profitable. It still made plenty of money. I so I don't understand why they suddenly freaked out and were like, "End it now!" But, but either way, so they basically took the ideas for Saw Seven and Eight, crammed them into one, and turned it into Saw Three D just to squeeze a few extra bucks and, out of it, and, which and, and never, is like, such bad management on my position. Like, why would you just freak out and throw a really bad gimmick into your, into a horror like? 3D and horror just doesn't work at all. Yeah, Final Destination. That was kind of weird. Yeah, but were we ever supposed to take Final Destination serious? I mean, well, I don't take this off. <laughs> <laughs> I take this more serious than that because by the time that came around, that hit set Final Destination had just turned into, ah, oh, we're just going to keep doing the same story over and over, but watch how horrible people die. Speaking yeah. of Final Destination... Did you recognize two Final Destination? Uh, yeah, people I in this movie. Any Final Destination the, film? So the I, Bobby's oh, wife right. is from the 
third movie, I think she yep. gets killed. She was the, the gr- she was the main she was the surviving guy's girlfriend who got killed on the roller coaster. Yeah, and oh man, and then Chad Danella, he's the cop here, and then he's from the first, he's a friend of the first movie. He was who, by Todd the way, who hung himself in the bathroom. Yeah, who by the way, fucking like terrible in this movie. Terrible. <laughs> Nothing against the actor, but he Why is was, so bad. He was still doing the mouth breathing that he did from Final Destination, <laughs> where his mouth's uh, always open. You know, he worked in that movie because he's like just playing some dumb teen. But in this one, he's supposed to be like some hardened cop. It feels like you're watching a like a high school play. Yeah, like sitting there being a smart ass while munching on an apple. Like how? Okay, the scene that solidified how bad his acting was. I think you're gonna agree. It was the one when he was first talking with Jill Tuck, and he's like, for a second, I knew you were crazy, crazy. <laughs> okay, crazy." <laughs> Here's what we're going to do. I'm like, dude, shut the fuck up. Why did you just call her crazy five times? I think it might've been improv because in that same scene, (laughs) she asks if she's safe and he's like, Jill, it's a safe house, safe house, safe house. It could have been improv. Oh my God. That was was so bad. (laughs) That was so bad. It was good. But this movie was, so this movie was still directed by the same guy who did Saw 6. It yeah. doesn't feel like it, it in the not, slightest. It does not, dude. It does not. It I mean, feels nothing like I feel like, honestly, sex. I, I feel like this is a case of like, you know, Justice League where they really messed up with the studio. I really feel like I don't it. think so. I don't think the studio had anything to do with this. Really? I and think he made it begrudgingly, though. This guy's like think, fucking like bipolar because I don't think like... I think he just made it begrudgingly because... Um, well, Chad, tell us about, like, he wanted to make Paranormal 2 or something? Yeah, so according to something I read a while ago, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. This is just something I read. Originally, uh, Kevin Gruert, however it's pronounced, Gruder, he wanted to direct Final Destination 2. Lionsgate wouldn't let him, and they pulled the contract on him and pulled him back, which I think is, I, I'm of two minds about. I think it's kind of shitty to force someone to make a movie for you because you know they're not going to give it their all if they don't want to do it why would they try but like right now i'm looking at the wikipedia page and um it says saw five director david hackle was to direct the film but two weeks before filming lionsgate announced that gruert who had directed the sixth would direct it doesn't go into detail but now it's like uh okay what happened with hackle what yeah. what did he do? Because and on top, I, go ahead. On top of that, like he had to direct a movie that was basically two movies forced into one. Yeah, yeah and yeah. David Hackle, by the way, he didn't leave on his own accord. He didn't direct anything until 2015 or until 2013. So oh, he wasn't true. leaving. He didn't leave on his own accord. I think. I don't know. I think. Maybe what's his face? Grutert Grutert going to file the paranormal activity too. Just maybe it just pissed them off. And they were just like, no, you're not going to the competition. You're gonna stay here and do this. I, I, I don't know. Studio politics. Nobody really knows. I think it's also worth mentioning that this is like the most expensive Saw movie at the time, and yet it's the like by far the shittiest looking one. It did. It had if you notice it, it had no it, atmosphere. It had blood, like, for miles. Pink like. blood, yeah. It's pink blood. It just, it, it, I mean, how do we go from, what is this one? Okay, so this, Saw 3D, $20 million. Compare that to the first one, 1.2 million. Which one looked better? Definitely the first, because it's James Wan. He knows what he's doing, even on a low budget. I mean, how that just says everything you need to know right there. When the first movie on 1.2 looks, looks better than better than the one with the bigger budget, yeah. And just this is a movie where it's like, aside from Jill, who the hell are we supposed to like in this movie? Yeah, I don't like Hoffman anymore. He he becomes a fucking terminator <laughs> at this point. I was like, dude, you are just killing people. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's cool and all. I mean, I don't mind that. I mean, like, yeah, like, go go nuts, dude. But like, go nuts. Yeah, but like at the same time, and I'm, I'm like, um, this is kind of the this is this is kind of getting unrealistic, even for Saw standards. I mean, <sighs> yeah, I hated that bit where he's like Jason Voorhees all of a sudden just slaughtering like 
20 Yeah, I was like, where, where, where the fuck did this come from? He's not a slasher villain, is he? He becomes Walter White for a second when he like rigs that machine gun to fire at those dudes like automatically. I wonder if Breaking Bad was inspired by that scene at all. It might have been. Yeah, you know what? And that's another thing that's majorly against this film. They just randomly, like you said, introduce um, that new cop, uh, Gibson. And it's like, why are we supposed to like this person? One, he's a really shitty character. Like you said, the bad <laughs> acting. But it's like, you just randomly in the movie ca- in the movie that's hailed as the final one, you just introduce a new cop. It's like, yeah. well, we don't like this guy. It's obvious he's going to die. So it's like, uh, why? You couldn't find anybody who'd survived to bring back? There was yeah, nobody they, left? They really done dirty by having, uh, by having Strom killed off that early. Yeah, yeah because said, it's like you were exactly what I said. Them. Like we have, Strom would have been better if he was if it was like a cat and mouse chase the entire like from five to seven. Mm-hmm. It's like they made it work in six because it was like Hoffman doing what he was doing, still up against Erickson and Perez. But then in this one, it's like okay, Erickson and Perez are dead. Jill thought she killed him physically. Jill doesn't stand a chance against a man like. <laughs> Costas Mandalore. He's got uh-huh. what? Probably 60, 70 pounds on her. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think it, it could have been Dr. Gordon, which they were kind of hinting at. Like, he, he, since he's from the first movie, that could have been like a nice tie in, but he's just shoved in here in like a random fan service moment. So, so yeah. I okay. Didn't... So, the be- I like that beginning, that beginning of him crawling out, but I think you said it way back at the beginning, Dylan. The amount of blood he'd lost, he would have died. And then you see it in this one. He's leaving, like, a pool of blood behind him. It's like, yeah, dude, you're, you're gone. You, you've he bled out gain, at this point. <laughs> and he gained, like, 30 pounds in between uh, Jesus, from crawling out the door. Jesus, enormous in this film. Yeah. I'm glad he's lost weight since, but it was distracting here. Yeah, I remember seeing that. That scene where he's, like, laying on the bed and Jigsaw's, like, putting the, like, fake foot on him. I'm like... <laughs> Dude, you look huge. <laughs> but it was like, as soon as we saw Gordon at the, um, like, I like the beginning where it showed him come out, cauterize the wound. That was cool. But as soon as he showed up at Bobby Dagan's, uh, yeah, I was like, okay, this survivor guy. thing. I was like, and he was like, I'm so happy to be part of your promotional <laughs> DVD. I was yeah. like, okay, he's going to do something at some point. Yeah. I was like, you you did such a horrible job of like hiding him. <laughs> yeah, and then, like... they, and then they ignore him until like the last minute or two. Yeah. But the sad part is that was the best that last like that was the four best minutes part. was yeah, the honestly. best part of the whole movie. Yeah, it was, honestly. I was like, yeah, okay. It was, it was yeah. cool. It was cool seeing that. It really I love that where it's like Hoffman's walking out, boom, the explosion in 3D. <laughs> two dudes grab him, Hoffman stabs him, all the flashbacks begin. And then I just, I will give it, what a perfect place to end it, in the bathroom where it started. That's true. Yeah. Uh, I will say also that the, this movie does have some pretty dope traps. I mean, the, the bit of the neo-Nazis, I, I like that whole setup. Yeah, I of, actually uh, did, even though like, it was kind of like, I, w- you know, I winced a little bit seeing his back getting ripped off in the yeah, spine. Yeah, um, I think the worst, I mean, the best trap in that it's the worst trap is probably the fish hook one. Oh, oh yeah, that that's, was really, that's a great trap. We have to use your pectoral muscles to go up, you know, like, oh, uh, okay. God, there's okay. I read something, could wasn't it like Dylan? You've probably seen it. It was something like he could have just taken his jeans off or something. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. He could have just stood on the hooks, or he could have just used his pants or his shirt to hook on to put on those hooks. But that never really bothers me because I, I don't know what I would do if I'm a trap. I'd probably be a total idiot too. Honestly, I wouldn't even have made it in that room because yeah. I don't yeah. think I would have been able to rip my yeah, own fucking teeth out. That's true. <laughs> I dude, I would have just fallen right on the spikes at the beginning. <laughs> I wonder what happened. And now I wonder before. who put the numbers on his teeth. Uh, Dr. Logan, Gordon. dude, or Dr. Dr. Gordon. Gordon? One of those. Dr. Gordon. Dr. 
I see, think. that's the problem is it's like they needed to show. Okay, I, I did like the scene where they showed everything Gordon had done, but it's like, I, again, so remember timeline wise, three, four, five, six, and seven have all taken place over two weeks. We got the flashback of Gordon showing Jigsaw Lynn's picture. And I don't feel like he did it. it, it they didn't make it seem like he did anything after that. Like he just set, said it and was like, oh, now I'm going to like, you know, take a step back and be done with this or something. Yeah. That's my big, that is probably my biggest problem I'll always have with this movie is the trap itself makes no fucking sense because no, uh, who not, did it? And the victims don't make sense. Okay, I'll give it, you know, his publicist and all that. Okay, yeah, fine. All right, fine. I'll give it that. But his but, friend? Yeah. I felt but so, just, I actually felt bad for that friend? guy. Like that guy, like he was a liar, but his friend wasn't that big of an asshole. No, and his wife, oh. dude. Like his wife didn't have, had nothing to do with it. Uh-huh. Yeah, his wife. I was expect. I was genuinely expecting them to flip it, like, like, oh, you're going to watch your wife die. Watch her die from right here, and then it was gonna like open up, let her go, and then murder him or something, which yeah. it should have done. Why did he get to live and she had to die? Yeah. You know, I think another original concept, which sounds silly, but it would have been like so bad as good, is that um, Bobby's final game. It would have been like televised for like a live audience. Oh. Similar to how, because I guess it ties in with how he sensationalized, you know, Jigsaw with his book. Now Jigsaw's going to sensationalize his, um, his game. So like a but, more modern Halloween resurrection. Yes, yes, exactly. That would have been hilarious. That would have been cool. I, See, you know, that's I, why I was saying this, this trap, this whole concept for Bobby's trap would have made sense if it had been like, almost if it had been Jigsaw the movie Jigsaw, like it had taken place years later or something. Because mm -hmm. like we said at the beginning, what idiot would openly say yeah. I survived a serial killer who's still alive? Yeah, and, and, and yeah. honestly, like another thing I, um, I did like is finally also seeing the reverse bear trap in action. No, oh, yeah. I hate, okay. How satisfying. No. Yeah. <laughs> I am going. I know you like the character. I do. I know. I know. No. I, I don't give a shit about Joe. No. I'm sorry, Chad. I, I get it's pretty, but um, okay, I don't. Okay. I, I so I will never forget when me and my friends saw this one in theaters. We were already not liking the movie, and we're sitting there. We're like, if they fucking kill Jill, if they kill, if they fucking kill Jill, if they kill Jill. And then I was like, she's gonna find a way out. They're gonna get out. And then as soon as her jaw ripped open. My one friend literally stood up and was like, fuck this movie. <laughs> he was pissed. It was hilarious. I don't know. Um, I, 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 thought I, Jill was compelling enough. To I, I, I didn't give a damn about Jill. I was like, all right. Jill. That's fine. No, no. I was it's just, just, I look at it more as like, even though she was, she was almost an accomplice, but not, she knew, but it's, I wouldn't say any of it was her fault like what was she supposed to do uh tell the police i don't know <laughs> i mean she you got to remember after what happened to gideon and then seeing her husband spiral into madness i mean you got to admit this she was probably extremely broken herself and she probably was too confused and scared and then by time she could have done something about it it was too late again these are the psychological elements that i wish the series kind of focused on more instead of you know just the low brow Archer. here murder people. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. That would have been that definitely would have been interesting. But yeah, that was a missed just... opportunity. But regardless, you know, seeing someone's face finally getting ripped open. <laughs> it didn't have to be Jill. It could have been anyone, honestly. But seeing the bear trap finally work was yeah. So satisfying. It was because that that had always been kind of one of those things like, what does it actually look like though? Mm -hmm. And obviously, I'm sure they, you know what? I'm sure they would have showed it in the first one if they'd had the budget. Yeah, probably. You know, I, I you know, hey, if you think about it, maybe we're running into like a, uh, a Jaws thing. If they could have made it work, they would have. But maybe they were just like, we don't have the money to do that kind of scene mm -hmm. or something. So just leave it out and leave it up to people's imaginations. Yeah. And that's what made the first movie so effective. I think that's why they kept it all in one bathroom, you know, because mm -hmm. that's just more convenient budget wise. Yep. 
But um, so I guess we'll just talk about the end real quick. Uh, I think the end is awesome. <laughs> it makes up for the rest of the movie, in my opinion. Yeah, that was awesome seeing like Lawrence Gordon like be, oh, he's the he's another so upper. Like how how many fucking oppressions <laughs> they have, dude? Like yeah, you know, <laughs> like, the, the next it's, one it was like holy shit, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> it's just pure fan service, but like you know, at at this point in the film, like why not just go full stupid? Yeah, I mean, it, it, and it made sense. I mean, because I always did kind of think like, once we got far enough along, it's like, all right, so is John a god? Like, what can't he do? But then when they explain <laughs> it was Gordon who did all the medical stuff, it's like, okay, now now it makes sense. What would have been so, good I mean, fan service? What would have been good fan service if, if as if the film were about you know Gordon getting his revenge and putting an end to the jigsaw to the whole jigsaw thing. I think that could have been good, substantial fan service. I wonder if they'll bring him back someday. Uh, probably. I hope they do. But I, I'll also give it the, the um, so I know a lot of people love um, the first uh, rendition of Hello Zep. This is my favorite version of the, of the score. There's something about the way it plays like right there at the end when Gordon looks down and just sees his severed foot. This did feel like a proper finale. Everyone was dead. Hoffman is stuck in there and Gordon is scot-free. And he's got no agenda. He has no reason to carry on the Jigsaw legacy. It was, it was a very messy finale, but at least it was a finale. It wasn't left with a cliffhanger of like, oh, but what if, what if this happens next? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Dylan, what was your thoughts on the end? I don't know. Just as a as a pure fan service moment, it worked. Um, obviously, it didn't make any sense at all. But um, <laughs> it was satisfying seeing you know Gordon back in the bathroom, seeing his severed foot there, and throwing the chains the the hacksaw right at the camera in three D. In three D. Yeah. CGI three D. You know what? It's like almost satisfyingly corny watching the three D <laughs> yeah. saw get thrown at the camera, and then the CGI saw bouncing out in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> so uh any final closing thoughts on saw 3d gentlemen nope i'm good uh yeah just a disappointing finale overall but um uh again i, I still do have have a soft spot for it like the entire saw franchise in general i wouldn't say it's that much worse than the rest but i don't know it just feels disingenuous it's like uh you can tell that Kevin Grodert or whatever was just begrudgingly making this. Yeah. Because again, how do you go from Saw Six to this? Yeah, it doesn't have like that that you know that vigor that Six had. It doesn't have that energy. But I agree with what you just said too. While I don't really like this movie, I don't have like a hatred for it like I do like Freddy's Dead or something, Ooh. or like. Uh, hollow or like Rob Zombie's Halloween too. Like I, de I despise those films, but it's like, yeah, I, there are still good points in this film. It's just it's a broken, messy finale, right? But so that pretty much ended things. I mean, it came out in 2010, and it was just like, all right, you know, we've pumped out one of these ever since 2004. It's it's time to put the saw franchise to rest and it was just you know then it went quiet and then out of the blue we were surprised in 2017 with boom jigsaw yeah so all right, so before we jump into this one, I just want to say that uh, me and my buddy, 
uh, who we both seen a bunch of these together. We watched the trailer, uh, obviously uh, multiple times before going into it. And we had a bet going on because from the trailers, obviously it alluded to John Kramer was back. And my buddy was like, I swear to God, he's like, if they go supernatural, if Jigsaw himself is still alive, I'm going to be pissed. I was like, dude, it's obvious Jigsaw's in this movie. He's coming back. So we actually had a bet. I bet that he was. My buddy bet that he wasn't. And in a sense, yeah, he and I right. both got what we wanted. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because like, it, so, it, so real quick, dive it into it. Santino, go ahead. Okay, first of all, how many fucking apprentices does Jigsaw have? <laughs> Hey, I liked Logan. I actually thought Logan was a good character. No, but like apparently this happens way before even the first saw. Like the trap plot happens. So like, okay, so if this happens way before the first saw, so let's we'll just ignore all the high tech plasma screen TVs and yeah. <laughs> okay, so all right. At least I don't have as much holes as, you know, Wonder Woman. Uh, no, they had plasma screens back in 2003. Yeah, but, like, why the downgrade from, from that to... Yeah, exactly, right? You know, okay. No, I, like, I, I, no I, I will never disagree with that because that is 100% true. Everything in this was, like... It's like if they, it's like when they did, like, look at original Star Trek 66 versus 2009 they're supposed to be like the same time era, yet obviously the 2009 movies are like hundreds of years more advanced. Yeah, I was like, okay, um, so this happens way before the first saw. So like there's plasma screens and there's like high tech technology. It's like, um, okay, <laughs> why? <laughs> and then, and then it says that, oh, so like Logan was your apprentice. And I was like, okay. See, I'll was he him. now what I having just rewatched it, was he actually an apprentice or just someone who yeah, I, yeah, he was, was kind of Jigsaw's like muscle guy who just did the heavy lifting? No, I'm I'm pretty yeah. sure he was. Like, I, I never I, got a sense by watching this that Logan was like you know passionate about a the or an Amanda. Yeah, he it was more of just um like his one off vengeance quest against um against Halloran. Halloran. Yeah. yeah. He seemed more like a, a vigilante or an, or an anti-hero rather it than a straight-up like soft Yeah, it over. seemed like he was somebody who knew what Jigsaw was doing, helped him with some of it, but was just like, you know, hey, keep me out of this. Because like possible. he had a wife and kid, don't forget. Yeah, I think it's possible that maybe maybe he did help him out until the until you know 3D or whatever, and then when it ended with Gordon, he just kind of went his own way. Mm -hmm. I think it's possible. I also think that I, I also um, this is the first time where I like two traps at the same time because they're, they're both awesome. Number one is the laser collar because that was really cool. Uh, uh, and number two, squid head. <laughs> yeah, oh, number yeah. two, the reverse shotgun. Okay, that's my favorite trap in the movie. That yeah. I think that hark harkens back to the simplicity of the of the first movie. God, that was awesome. I love that too. He holds up the bullet. This is your key to freedom. Yeah. Again, listen to Jigsaw and you will survive. Right. So Dylan, what was your first, so did you get to see this one in theaters? Uh, no, I caught it a little bit after. Okay. What was your also first impressions of this one? Um, <clears throat> I think it's a, it's a fine Saw movie. It's a, I think for the most part, it's kind of average, albeit more technically like competent you know it doesn't have any of the fast editing in fact i don't think there's a single handheld shot in the entire movie i think it's it's fairly locked down for a saw movie um but the final twist goes so over the top and so <laughs> ridiculous and how it you know retcons the rest of the series it's so stupid that it just it made me enjoy the movie so much more i think the only major issue i had with this movie and when i say major i mean it's look what movie we're talking about <laughs> But And when I say major, I mean, this is a major problem, like to the same level of who the hell kidnapped everyone for Bobby's game in Saw 3D. Yeah. How the hell did Logan get Edgar Munson's body in Jigsaw's coffin? Yeah. 
Dude, How that, the hell did he pull that off? There, there's so many, so much wrong. Did he spend all place. night digging it up, getting down there? And where did John's body go? <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> were they saving that for a jigsaw too? In the barn, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> there's so much wrong with the twist there. I mean, there's a. Uh, I mean, the, the fact that he recreated those crime scenes all 10 years later for no real reason other than to, I guess, frame Halloran. Not and just he that. He literally could have just killed those people. Yeah, he, he could have. But then he'd be a murderer like Jigsaw hates. Not just that, but the fact that these, uh, so all the victims here are like the people Halloran set free, right? And they Scumbags. all, not only, yeah, not only did they all happen to, you know, get killed in the traps, but they all happened to physically resemble the same people that fell into those same traps 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, I was like, whoa, dude. I was like, whoa. It's like, like it's like, the, that was blonde such woman a... who gets, the blonde woman who gets injected with the acid, like the exact same, a blonde 10 years later fell for the exact same trap. <laughs> uh, that was convenient. I, was like, I think, oh. buck, well, Buckethead and the dude who got sliced up, I think those could have worked. But you're right. The blonde, like, I mean, I guess the question, the her accusation could have been different. Maybe. I guess. I don't know. I don't know. It's I just really it's, that. And it's funny because I remember um, I went and saw this with my usual buddy. I saw all these with, and then randomly another friend of ours who doesn't even like horror film was the mm -hmm. one who asked us to go see this, and we're like. Okay. Uh, we were already planning on it. Uh, why do you want to go? You haven't seen any of these. And he's like, it looks really interesting. Eventually, one night, we're all sitting around, like, just having a few drinks. Uh, this was, like, a few weeks before the movie came out. And we're like, dude, why do you really want to go see Jigsaw? He's like, because Supergirl from Smallville's in the movie. <laughs> Wait, we're like, Wait. really? Which That's why? Which one is she? She was the she was the chick who made it to the end to kill her baby. Oh jeez, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> but we're like, that's why you want to see this because Supergirl's. <laughs> There's also no reason that he should have had to recreate the exact same crime like ten years later. Yeah, yeah. It's dude. not like anyone. It's not like anyone found the bodies. It's not like anyone was catching I up. Think, There's no reason. I think he did it for just like admiration reasons. I guess. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, maybe that's uh, again possibly <laughs> reaching. I'm just. I mean, it it had they it just because they had to write it that way for the movie to make sense. But yeah, when trying to make sense of a fictional <laughs> character, I guess. Even even like putting Halloran him and Halloran in a trap was kind of pointless. Like, okay, what if Halloran made himself go first? Then what would he have lived? No, he still would have killed him. Yeah, I know. That was the whole point of that trap. <laughs> Just to trick the audience so we could have him, you know, yep. rising from the ground all bloody like in the first movie. Like we said, uh, there's been so many... It, it's almost like any movie when they get lazy and get this far along. There's, It's like the main character knows the script and has the plot armor before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because and, they know, you know what's coming. I'm, I'm okay with that. Whereas Saw 3D was so dumb because it felt like they weren't trying. This one, it's like they tried way too hard to have this yeah. all make sense, and it doesn't, but that's, there's something satisfying about that, you know? And Just you know what I, an, another thing I loved was um that chick that, that's another thing I love about these movies. They've always got so many hot girls in them. That yeah. uh chick that Logan worked with, Eleanor, yeah. I friends. wouldn't give it that. That is a gorgeous girl. Beautiful <laughs> redhead, I think. I wouldn't mind if she returned. I would love to see her back because I thought that was, I loved what they did with that character. They made her like a saw fangirl, which yeah, at yeah, that yeah. point in time, like that was reflective of like the saw community who still loved this franchise and wanted it to come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I thought that was actually really, I mean, it worked into the story, but it also was, I, I thought it was kind of cool, reflective of the audience who were like, we want this franchise back. We love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's reflective. I think I think it's um, I think she has real potential to be like the kind of final girl of this new Saw series. And I hope they keep going because this came out in 2017, and the next movie was a spinoff. But it's like 
I don't understand why this didn't continue. This movie was made for ten million, and it made a hundred and three. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's <laughs> it's not the worst review of the series either. No, it actually got pretty yeah. good reviews, and I for a saw movie. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> still a thirty. <laughs> I think what is it? Saw three D was like in the teens or something. I think it was like a ten or a nine. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, rightfully so. I mean. Uh, let's see. Uh, I guess let's talk the trap itself. Uh, uh the tra- okay, that's that's where it gets a little, except the music yeah, and the a little show. underwhelming. And I don't like how high tech they are in comparison to the first. If they made a more like, you know, subtle and psychological, like the shotgun trap, I think that would have worked. Yeah, yeah. But, like yeah the the, stuff- pull, the pulling towards the buzz, the blades. All right, here's my biggest problem with that. CGI. Besides that, <laughs> I get what they were going for, but like when the when Jigsaw's voice was like, you know, any amount of blood will set you free. Like, okay, so was he watching or was there a sensor? Because if it was because a sensor, how would he know if blood was, was shed? Yeah, because there's a peephole or something. No, because like, like well, yeah, but that wasn't revealed till the end of the movie. No. <laughs> Because if it was a sensor, then that wouldn't make any sense. It's like, at the time, the technology wouldn't have made sense. <sighs> yeah, that's a problem. Why is this so much more high-tech than all the other ones? Exactly. The fact that it's There's so that, high-tech. That well, motorcycle. Like, it feels like that one was high-tech. The motorcycle could make sense because, remember, it's just the giant spinning death red thing in the middle was running on the engine going, so it was turning because of that. Okay. Uh, the dude the one asshole who lost his leg. I don't think that one felt too high tech. That uh, one was fine. Actually, like, I, I do like that that guy started, yeah. out, started out as the group asshole, but by the end, you're kind of rooting for him. I mean, he sacrificed his leg to save the other two people. He sacrificed his leg, and if you think about what he did wrong, I'm sorry, this guy it wasn't, wasn't really his fault. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't really it his wasn't. fault. Yeah. He was a dumb teen who accidentally got his friends killed. I don't think he deserved <sighs> to be condemned to death for what he did. Yeah, okay. and at the end, he he figured out the jigsaw riddle too late, but he he he, he realized at the last second that they weren't supposed to shoot each other. And I failed to understand why Jigsaw just left him there to die, because it's like... Yeah, dude. It wasn't his movie. fault. The chick with the leg, <laughs> the he chick who wasn't the... missing any ligaments, made it to the shotgun and tried to murder him. Why did he deserve to die? He spared. But what Logan. difference did it make? He spared Logan because you know you shouldn't die because of some random mistake, and yet, you know, this guy dies because of the girl's mistake. Yeah. And you know what? Speaking of what you just said, I genuinely really liked that because that was where. I mean, it, we can call it retconning, but I do like how that was the catalyst for John being like, emotion cannot be involved in this because Logan made a mistake. It was not a malicious intent. It wasn't yeah. Logan not appreciating his life. It was an honest mistake. So you can tell Logan was put in this trap originally out of malicious intent. Then Jigsaw was like, shit, it's not his fault. He made a mistake. Right. I... I do find John's final line kind of comical. Like it cannot come out of like venge- anger or vengeance. You know, we'll speak yeah. for the dead, and like the entire, the entirety of Saw Six is him taking revenge against people who wronged him. True, but Gibson was also a monster and had done it to many other people. <laughs> in fact, even, or Easton, uh, not Gibson. Hell, even in, in the even in this movie, like. There's, he's taking revenge on the guy who, who indirectly <laughs> killed his nephew. <laughs> That's so true. Oh, <laughs> but the guy did know, but he did say it. He's like, you knew the brakes were faulty. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. yeah. That's a fair, that's a fair day. Surprised but, he didn't go after the truck driver. What's that? I'm surprised he didn't go after the truck driver. That's very true. <laughs> that would have been awesome if the truck driver... <laughs> <laughs> and the truck driver's boss, and you know, the... But instead, we get a drug oh, addict who uh, accidentally killed a woman with asthma. How did Jigsaw even know that? And how did he know how much how much <laughs> quartz right. she had in her purse? That's why I loved that one because I'm like, that makes no sense. How did yeah, you know exactly. about this? That, and like, for like you said, that. the guy who lost his leg, what did he randomly do? Just start going through old police files? I guess. I, well, okay, I guess it's Hoffman's job, isn't it? 
I don't know. Had he met? Ho- no, he hadn't even. Had he met Hoffman at that point? I no, I'm because this was sure. a game played before all the others, and Seth Baxter didn't happen until Jigsaw got started. Oh, okay. Fair enough. God, look at us trying to remember this <laughs> messed up timeline. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh, Santini, you've been quiet. What have you thought? I just feel like Jigsaw, like, in my opinion, it's a very, it, it felt like, um, I don't like it as much as you guys do because I just feel like it's very useless. You know, like, you're, it's an excuse to bring back more traps. And if that was the case, then um, you should have crafted it way better because, like, it wasn't impressive. And I just feel like, um, there's way too many apprentices apprentices of Jigsaw. Like, yeah. Eh, it makes Amanda, sense. I mean, what's one, one old Florida, man going to do? Hoffman, and now you have Logan. It's like four four guys, dude. Four, <laughs> that's, four people. that's okay with me. That is all okay. Oh, and I forgot. This was the movie that introduced that John has, um, uh, John's a superhero. He has super hearing. Somehow, he heard his neighbor in the house next door kill the baby. He knew yeah, it was her and not like her cool. husband. Or How something. the hell did he know that? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> like he, he, he knew it was her specifically who. Yeah, not, not, not who the husband, him. not the detectives who you know probably did the autopsy on the child to see how it actually died. Uh, you know, not no nobody else. Just he knew it was. <laughs> they could have just shown him like you know like maybe he's peering through the window and he sees her like in the crib and everything, but but no. But he how just many? Him. Okay, but like I live in a house, I. I, if my neighbors had a baby, I wouldn't be able to hear it crying. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it's it's another one of those like yeah you just just but John but in all honesty, John Kramer's been like that since the first movie. There's so many things that he shouldn't know about that he somehow does. He does. Right. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> um so okay so going back to what i said at the very beginning where me and my buddy had the bat the jigsaw was coming back so So we we hit that scene where what's that it was a tie i guess right because like (laughs) well so we hit that scene where he's standing there i remember both of us in the theater i was like dude that's him and my friends like it better not be it better not be because i think we'd already (laughs) hit the scene where the casket had been opened and he's like, yeah. it better not be him. Better not be him. And then as soon as he took the hood off, I was like, oh, Jigsaw's alive. My friend's like, God damn this movie. And then we hit the end where Logan was like, 10 years ago, a game was played in this bar. And I was like, <laughs> oh, shit. And then that's where my friend was like, and then both, like I said, we both won. I got to see Jigsaw come back in a way that made sense. And Jigsaw didn't actually come back. Right. So I thought, you know what? I actually liked that twist, that it was a game, like we yeah, said, yeah, 10 yeah. years earlier. Yeah. Logan's game didn't make the most sense, but, you know, I, I enjoyed it for what, I'll put it this way, as a standalone movie, okay, if this movie had had no connection to Jigsaw and it was just some random film, it definitely wouldn't have worked, I don't think. Imagine, imagine right. though, like, imagine, like, um, um, if, if this movie was like called The Barn and it was like some independent like horror movie like not related to Saw and you see that happening. Like it's actually- I think they would have cleaned it up because they would have taken out all the fan service stuff. Yeah, yeah, true. I'd say, I mean, like, this is- Go ahead. This is potentially uh, uh, Tobin Bell's final performance as Jigsaw and I think it's a pretty solid last performance to go out. I'd say his time here is definitely better spent than in Saw 3D where he has like one flashback and he's dressed up like Eminem for some reason. And uh, oh, in a backwards baseball cap. Yeah. And in this one, I think, I think they made much better, they made much better use of him. Mm-hmm. And I, I did like how it kind of humanized his character a little more like that with, with saving Logan's life, I think added something to the character. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, like, like he wasn't a complete dick, you know? I think it helped evolve the character in the way that we saw him in the end, because like that, he could have just done all of this out of maliciousness. He was smart enough. He knew how to do it. He knew how not to get caught. And he could have just let Logan die, but he realized he's like, it's, this guy made a mistake. And he's like, he doesn't deserve to die for it. Mm -hmm. 
And I did, you know what, like, like we talked about earlier, Logan's final giant dialogue, breaking down everything he did. Yeah, it's filled with problems, but, I, but being honest, I did enjoy it. I don't know why, but I always love listening to that dialogue. I, I did too. I mean, <clears throat> I think, well, obviously the Hello Zap helps. Um, like I said, it's like a Pavlov response. Even if the twist is kind of lame, once you hear that, that music intercut with a fast montage, it's like, you know, I instantly get chills, even if it isn't very good. And Matt Passmore's voice, I'm not going to lie, I absolutely loved it. Yeah. <laughs> like that, I, first si- that first scene when Halloran's like, when uh, Logan first stands up in Halloran for like 30 seconds, it's like, what? what? You, you, uh, what? Uh, and then he's just like, you're working with him? I am yeah. him. I was like, oh, that sounds badass. I even like his final, I know this is unpopular, but I, I like his final line, I speak for the dead. For yes, the dead. I was, I was going to say that because I've heard so many people be like, he should have said game over. And it's like, he, Logan was never in a game where game over was set. He has no reason to say it. Yeah. Plus the guy was dead. Would have been kind of awkward. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but time. I did like how he said that to him. He's like, I speak for the dead, the people who wound up on my table because yeah. of the choices you made. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, Jigsaw, definitely a mixed bag because I-, I know a lot of people who hate this film. Where, like, this movie has no right being part of the franchise. I'm like, wow, I didn't think it was that bad. No, it's not that bad, but I, I, I do like, um, I do like, uh, uh, this, some of the traps, but overall. Like the original run better? Yeah, I like the original run better, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, it feels like, <clears throat> it feels like, um, that revival season of the X Files, you know? Mm hmm. A little, little force. No but... right to exist. Yeah, but, um, Whatever, uh, on its own, I think it's competent. And um, I think for the most part, it was like a pretty mediocre Saw movie that happened to be better made on a technical level. But when it got to, the, to that twist, you know, I was happy. I was like, yeah, that's the trash. That's the that's the overly <laughs> convoluted soap opera that I love about the series. So I was I was okay with it. <laughs> and I, 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 I like how you said that's the trash, you know. That's the- yeah, that's the that's that's the corniness that I that I love <laughs> about the series. It's, I know what you're saying because, like Santino, that's how we felt during like the Friday the Thirteenth franchise when yeah. we hit like something like Friday the Thirteenth Part Six. It's like just just show us people getting murdered. Yeah, <laughs> just who cares anymore? Or Part Eight, just just show us inventive deaths. That's part all we eight, need. Yeah, we're, we're we're so like deep into this thing. Yeah, we get married. All right, so that wraps up Jigsaw. Definitely, well, I, w- I was going to say the black sheep, but not really. I mean, not really the black sheep. It There's was a decent, sheep. it was a decent revival, and I might be in the minority. I hope they keep going with it because, like you said, I like more out of these. I don't know what they could do, and it would require somebody with a creative idea. But I think they can keep going. I mean, it's horror. They can always find a reason to keep going. So yeah, when it comes to Saw itself, Jigsaw kind of, Jigsaw is pretty much the final one, but we still got an episode left. So we'll be talking about the spinoff, Spiral, and then we'll be giving our rankings. So guys, we will be back in a few days to talk Spiral in our rankings. We'll see you there. Bye guys. Bye.